Good morning. We are to be more than sorrowful for our sins. We must turn our whole being toward the Lord. Before we begin, let us take a few moments to pray for healing and forgiveness. Acknowledging our sins once again, we prepare now to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A 
reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce it to the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's biding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city, and it took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city, and he had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them and did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning and those using the world as not to its fullest. For though for the world in its present tense is passing away. The word of the Lord.
The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord be to you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just two days ago on uh, January 22nd, we all uh, experienced that powerful reminder once more. A reminder that is been in our consciousness since 1973, where we are once again working and praying for the legal restoration of the right to life for the unborn. As we once again become conscious of how our work and prayers are never done in this important work, we uh, are also always recognizing the sadness that accompanies any lost pregnancy in the lives of mothers and fathers. And we continue to support all individuals, families, and communities of those who suffer the devastating effects of ab abortion. Project Rachel is one among other ways of reaching out to communicate our recognition, our understanding, and our commitment to help people in need. Project Rachel and other such programs can be accessed through the Diocese of Madison. Pro-life people should strive to present their case in ways that appeal to those who do not share all their convictions. Patience is needed. The immediate goal is to save as many lives as possible. Public opinion polls firmly establish the need for better education. Consider these discrepancies between misconceptions and the facts. Almost half of all Americans think there are less than 500,000 abortions a year in the United States. 31% believe the total is under 100,000. The fact is that there are 1.6 million abortions performed annually. 
A majority of Americans think 20% of all abortions are due to rape or incest. The fact is that less than 1% of abortions are for such reasons. About a third of all abortions are performed on teenagers, generally without parental knowledge or consent. 40% of all abortions are performed on women who have had an abortion previously. Two million American couples are on agency waiting lists to adopt a child. In matters of opinion, 67% of Americans favor laws requiring parental consent and 87% are in favor of laws that would require giving information on alternatives to abortion before an abortion could be performed. 56% believe that the right of the unborn to life should prevail when the heart starts beating, three weeks after conception or earlier. 93% of Americans would like to see more restrictions placed on abortion than currently exist. The facts are sobering and once again are intended to help us renew our efforts, renew our work, renew our prayer to make the right to life legal for the unborn. Prayer especially. O oh Mary, bright dawn of the new world, mother of the living, to you do we entrust the cause of life. Look down, O Mother, upon the vast numbers of babies not allowed to be born, of the poor whose lives are made difficult, of men and women who are victims of brutal violence, of the elderly and the sick killed by indifference or out of misguided mercy. Grant that all who believe in your Son may proclaim the gospel of life with honesty and love to the people of our time. Obtain for them the grace to accept that gospel as a gift ever new, the joy of celebrating it with gratitude throughout their lives, and the courage to bear witness to it resolutely in order to build together with all people of goodwill the civilization of truth and love to the praise and glory of God, the creator and lover of life. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us place our prayers before God this morning. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide and inspire them and keep them faithful to Christ and the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civic leaders in our country receive the spiritual and practical resources necessary to bring an end to violence and poverty and to promote unity and respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may heed the voice of Christ's calling, calling us to follow him on the path of loving service toward our neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in mind or in body, that our Lord lovingly touch their hearts with the spirit of healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who have gone before us, especially Edward Felton, may they find perfect peace through eternal rest with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, creator of all life, grant a favorable hearing to all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we proclaim the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. For those of you joining us from home, please join with me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. in Christ and one in heart 
and mine. Let all quarrels, all divisions, all our conflicts cease. Then will Christ truly dwell among us as our Lord of peace. Ubi caritas et amor Dei uci bies. Ubi caritas et amor Dei uci bies. And join with the blessed, filled with hope and grace. Dear Lord, in great glory, may we see your face. Our joy none can measure, joy that knows no end, resounding from endless age to age, amen. Ubi caritas et amor Deus Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, thanks to all of you who help us after Mass and uh, preparing the church for the following Mass. And thank you for by lowering your kneeler helps us to focus a little more effectively on the areas to uh, sanitize. Have a good week ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We are many parts, we are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirits of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share. One our hope and despair, one the cross that we bear. God of all, we look to you. We would be your servants true. Let us be your love to all the world. We are many parts. We are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirits of love make us one in deep, one the love that we share. One our hope and despair, one the cross that we bear.